Kalia. Okay. Things clear up. It's really good. If you've been wondering about a love relationship that's really, really important and you've had to put it on ice for a while because you just couldn't talk about it. For some reason, every time you try to talk about it, the misunderstandings just got worse. Well, if that's the case specifically, congrats. This is your February love reading. And it's a good one for those of you who've been waiting, no, six months for the misunderstandings to clear up. Getting back together with the person you love is possible. Reclaiming your partnership, your marriage, your your love after some sort of heartbreak, pain, again, misunderstanding, very possible. The Empress, the Three of Cups, the Nine of Swords, also a reassessing of what makes you, you. When does the Empress energy become self-medicating and toxic and overindulgent? When does the Empress energy translate into the Three of Cups, therefore leading us into a Nine of Swords state of mind? Ooh, big questions, Leo. Page of Swords, Ace of Cups, and the Scorpio card. What I love about this month for you is that there are loose ends that tie together and should tie together in a happy, harmonious way. You deserve it. You deserve to have a rebirth in love especially if there is an air sign involved. Someone that you want to protect and look out for, someone for whom you would risk a rebirth in love. Because although it is offered to you, Leo, doesn't mean you have to take it. There have been many times when you have not taken it, but there is something special about this February and about this time in your life. Sure, you could move along, focus on work, focus on some restructuring, perhaps re-signing, perhaps having a lawyer go through some paperwork again. You could do that. You could focus there. <clears throat> But the opportunity you have to rehabilitate your love relationships is huge. The ability to clear the air, whether you end up with that person or not, also huge. The ability to perhaps see within oneself what is lacking and be able to change it, therefore making the whole experience very, very positive and bringing the object of your love closer to you in the meantime. This is a lot of your focus because a lot of the pushing away of people happens from here. And regardless of the misunderstandings you think you've had, a lot of it has been you pushing the other person away. If you're dealing specifically with a Scorpio or an air sign, they are very keen to come back or someone who has heavy Scorpio placements, 
They are very, they are very keen to come back. They're very keen to offer whatever you would like. In general, in your love life, people are penitent and wanting to offer you whatever they can to have you back in their life. And I suggest you do what you have done in the past, which is to play it very cool, to remember the reality of things, to not take that reality of things out on yourself. This card doesn't want to come up. It's probably the most important actually. To learn how to not take other people's mistakes as flaws in your character. Oh, the T. Oh, the T. To give people the room to have those flaws, make those mistakes, and yet choose to love them and receive love from them. And to have your home and family be your ultimate and perhaps only goal. You will learn so much. You will experience so much. You will learn through those experiences so much. Focus. And whatever it is that you need to say that you feel like you haven't said yet, say it, but then leave it alone. Whatever it is that you feel is making you so sad and not in the Empress energy at all, realize that you are indulging that feeling. When this person comes back to you with the rebirth of a love, take them at their word. And have faith. When it comes to work, there's too much work and partying mixing. It's not going to work like that for too long. Okay. Good stuff. Let's look at these cards, yeah? Love you. Hi Leo, welcome to the second part of your reading. Technically a Valentine's Day reading because the first part was done, <laughs> but here we are. So it's the day after and like I always say, I'm glad I waited. Now let's talk about why. I think that sometimes when it comes to you, I may impose my own air sign nature on you too much. If there is one sign that I have somewhat of a communication problem with, as in I can miss the mark, it's with Leos. Not because we don't get along. I mean, you get along with everyone. But I think that there is an element to my nature that wants to make someone do what's best for them. And cats are by nature immune to people's wants or their needs, actually. I, I, I mean, no, no, not to their needs. Cats are known to go and sit near people who are sick and purr. And we know the purring of a cat actually um, boosts your immune system. It helps in speeding up the healing of broken bones. <clears throat> Animal shelters often find that there is one cat that will go around and sit with all the sick animals and purr. So you are very good at knowing what people need, perhaps way more than they know, 
which is also disconcerting and unnerving, right? But you are immune to people's wants. Now, some people would call that ego. Uh, others would call that a healthy self-love, you know, putting yourself first. But I think um, it's something mysterious. I don't think you can actually articulate what it is any less, you know, any more than you could articulate why a cat behaves the way it does. We are so fascinated in fact, with the behavior of cats, that when we have the ability to observe just about anything in the world, we choose to spend most of our time observing cats. Because it is that confusing to us. Why do they do what they do? Because we live in a world where everyone has been orientated to look after the needs of the next person. Sure, there is this cynical narrative that the world has gotten worse and everyone's gotten meaner. And it, but, but if you look around, almost everyone you know has been trained from birth to be very sensitive to the wants of others and to change themselves to adhere to those wants. Whether they like the person or not, that's the funny part. Leos will change a little here and there, a little. Only if they really, really, really love the person. Only if they can see something real. But when Leo looks around at the world, what Leo sees is a just a mass of people everywhere you look who are doing that, what you consider a sacred thing. You're a fixed sign. You're not trying to change for anybody. You see people do that every day, every minute, like they breathe. They compromise themselves again and again and again and again. So as one of those people in the world that has been uh, raised to be sensitive to the wants of others, maybe not even to the needs, to be honest, I can, like everyone else, sometimes impose my view on what I think you should do. <laughs> and where I have no problem communicating that to all the other signs in a language they'll understand. There's no way around it. There's no language for me to talk to you like that because it just doesn't work. Leos are a brick wall when it comes to their will. You know, just like you can't make a cat pay attention to you. You can't make a cat come and sit with you. It's just not possible. And if you try, you'll get hurt like actually really hurt, you know? Grown, full grown adult, big ass humans are terrified of house cats because everyone has had an experience with a cat where you go, oh my God, this thing could kill me. Much in the same way, we find that when people try to get Leos to do what they want and it doesn't happen to coincide with, with, with what you want, things get very messy. What's even messier is when you get a Leo into a situation where they completely forget what they want. <laughs> After everything I just said to you, the build up, the build up, the build up. You're so great. You're so authentic. You're so genuine. Here's the drop. Just like in the Virgo video for last month, I said that your standards are so high that it's unbelievable and then the person you settle down with doesn't adhere to any of those standards and is a complete disappointment in the eyes of the person you were or the person you, you wanted to be with. It's just very confusing. So in the same way, when they, when they love, so the standards are so high and then they love someone and all their standards go away. As soon as they love someone, it doesn't matter what that person does. In the same way, not all of you, but the ones of you that seem to suffer when it comes to love relationships, interpersonal relationships, relationships uh, specifically with your parents. You know, Leo is that sign. Again, the strong will often has problems with one parent. Deep problems. Problems they don't think they can resolve. Problems that show up in their love life. Intractable, you know, critical dad who's not around. A Leo is going to take that real, real personal because Leos look to their social environment to 
create themselves. That's why also you can get this, you know, um, this false narrative of Leo's being fake. There's nothing fake to, there's nothing fake about observing your surroundings and then being the perfect killing machine in that surrounding while being camouflaged, meaning completely immersed in whatever environment they're in. They look like their environment and yet completely standing out as the strongest thing in the environment. It's very confusing. A lion is the color of the grass in the savannah, on the savannah, right? Exactly. So when the lion hides in the grass, you can't see it. And yet, this animal that is capable, lionesses particularly, capable of completely disappearing are the same animal that is known for being the most recognizable, visually the most stunning, visually the most dramatic. How is that possible? Do you see that dichotomy? Completely immersing oneself in the environment, completely fitting into whatever look is necessary for that moment, for whatever is going on. I had this realization the other day about Kylie Jenner and she's a Leo, so let's talk about it. Um, first of all, she's a kid. So I think anything she does and everything she's done is amazing because she's a child to be able to accomplish that much as a child is phenomenal. Um, so more power to her, but it was so funny for me to realize something that I should have realized a long time ago, uh, being just like a study of personality, I guess. But I saw this meme after the Super Bowl about how Kendall Jenner said that Kylie used to dress up like Shakira when she was a kid and run downstairs and want to perform for the family. And it made me realize something just like that. Boom. She's not a makeup guru. She's not a skincare guru. She's not a reality TV star. She's like kind of shunned that entire thing. She's simply a performer. She can immerse herself. She's a very good one. So she can immerse herself in the world of beauty and completely take on that visage if, you want, if she wants to. She can be a bare-faced skincare you know, mogul if she wants to. She can be an Instagram thought if she wants to. She can be a mom if she, and then she just dives into every one of those roles and performs the hell out of it. So there's that dichotomy, completely immersing oneself in the environment. So you completely fit in and then dominating it. That's you, right? So now that we know <laughs> what we're dealing with, or I'm getting a better understanding of what I'm dealing with, it helps me to, so it helps me talk to you. So what I want to say, first I'm going to tell you what I want to say, what my uh, stellium in Aries wants me to say. <laughs> My 10th house stellium wants me to say to you in the most harsh way possible that you are not going to like, but perhaps will appreciate in a few months. You need to let this go. I know you want the talk and the closure and the ah, 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 and, but you need to let it go. And you need to let it go for yourself and not for anybody else. Because what you're doing to yourself here is not funny and it's not nice and it's messy. Here, look. There is other stuff. There is a world beyond what you feel. You have to remember that. Just because you are the sun and everything revolves around you, let's not forget about the galaxies and other solar systems. And you, you understand what I'm saying? There is life after whatever you are feeling right now. You have to keep that in mind. And not only is there life, but there is a very good life full of things that you actually want, not just things you'll tolerate for attention. Okay, sorry, I know, that was a little, hey, that was a little harsh, I get it. Now, let me give you the, the version that's palatable to a Leo, because I'd never say that to a lion's face, you know that, right? The power of the internet. Now let me give you the version <laughs> that I would give you if you were standing in front of me. <laughs> this really hurts. It hurts to the point where I think you yourself can see that something that is very important to you, which is, you know, your overall vibes, your life, your quality of life, like everything that you got going on, 
I think you can see how that is becoming a bit damaged by your coping mechanisms in trying to deal with this. Now, is this just about you? No. It's about you. It's about your parents. It's... I could go on and on. Are you feeling it very personally right now? Because you're like, no, but it's my life. Yes, of course, it is your life. But I'm just trying to give you some perspective that it's not just because of you. There's no blame here is what I'm trying to imply. A lot of what you're doing is out of blaming yourself, blaming yourself for not being stronger, blah, blah, yada, yada. There's a lot of things you blame yourself for that nobody knows about. And I don't need to call you out in front of the whole world. You know what I'm talking about. Also keep in mind that there are <clears throat> unrequited feelings all around and I suspect they'll be around for a long time. But you have a chance in the next three or four weeks to mull it over once again. And perhaps you come to the conclusion that the thing that has given you so much pain is worth another try because you're able to rebirth it. Or perhaps you find that someone else, also from the past, perhaps a Scorpio, wants to reboot. Either way, as much as it may not seem, may not seem like that now, the road becomes very bright and very clear and easy, easy in a way that you like. Good. Okay, let's get into the extended right now. <laughs> Love you. Oh, tickets for London, uh, the rings. If you want to take a look at Revolution Rings on the website, uh, extended on Vimeo, instant extended is the same as the extended on Vimeo. The only difference is uh, the instant extended, you don't have to sign up for anything. You just order it and it's sent straight to your inbox. Please check your spam folder. Okay. Love you. Let's do this.